Hey friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using Hello Bluebirds, Meadow Bunnies, Strawberry Jam, and Pig Out. So I have stamped all those images out on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White Cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black Ink, and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. There is going to be quite a bit of coloring in today's video since I have two panels to color, but if that is up your alley, then this video is definitely for you. I am starting with my sweet little bunnies and I'm going to color them using E50 and E51. I wanted them to be really light buff colored bunnies. So I laid in some shadows with that E51 and then I'm blending that out with the E50 and kind of letting that fade into the white cardstock for the highlight. I'm gonna color both bunnies the same, just flipping my shadows since they're facing different directions. I like to keep the face highlighted so that you can really see those features prominently. So I just kind of um, did my shadows based on the direction that they will be facing and where they'll be placed on the card. So once I'm done with my second little bunny, I am going to add in some rosy cheeks and also color their noses and the insides of their ears using R11 and R20. Little R20 inside that ear and on the nose and then on the cheek and then blending that out with the R11. Now because they are so pale and the area that the rosy cheek is going over is white. I did need a third shade so I pulled in the R000 just to soften that and I used that on the inside of the ear as well. While I have those pink shades out I'm also going to color the butterflies putting that R20 closest to the body and then blending out with the R11 and then I'll save some room on the outer tips of the wings for that R000, so I get a nice fade toward those outside edges. And then I also wanted to color the blanket to be a soft pink. So this time I'm gonna start with that R000. I wanted to try to do some shadowing on here with uh, like different ripples in the blanket and I wanted to make sure that the paper was saturated first since this is something new that I'm attempting. So basically then I'm coming in with the R11 from the top and the bottom and just drawing in a little dip in the surface of that blanket, making sure that I have that as thick as I want it. And then I'll come back in with that R000 and start to blend that out. I wanted that to be pretty subtle, so I am really making sure to go over the edges of that on both sides and blend that out. And then I also am going to come in with that R11 again and deepen up the shadows on the outside edges and kind of create a little bit of a highlight um, between the edges and the fold and then another larger highlight in the center of that blanket. So I think it's something that I still need to work on, but I think it does give you kind of the effect of, you know, like an uneven surface on the ground there. Um, and I am going to be adding a pattern over top of this as well. So uh, I knew that that would mask like any, you know, um, if it wasn't perfect or something like that, it would kind of mask it. So it was a good time to just try this out and see how it worked. So it did take a little bit of going back and forth to get it how I wanted it with those shadows and highlights. But uh, yeah, I'm happy with how it turned out in the end. So before I do the pattern on the blanket, I need it to be completely dry. So I'm moving on to T0 and T1 and doing the bunny's tail and also the little mugs and the plate and I'll do the knife with that T1 as well. Um, then I'm blending out that T1 with the T0 on all the things that I want to be white. I'll add a couple more dots to the bunny's tail to help it look nice and fluffy. And then I'm also gonna do just a tiny bit of shading on the napkin that's hanging out of the picnic basket. I want that to be white as a base. 
I also did pull in some T3 for the knife and blended that out with the T1. And then I decided I wanted the silverware a little bit darker. So I used the T5 for the spoon that was sticking out of the jam jar and added a little of that to the handle of the knife as well. Then I'm moving on to my picnic basket and I'm going to use E55, E57, and E59. So I added the E59 to both the left and the right of the basket to help that look more rounded and then also added a bit of shadow around that napkin both outside and inside the basket. And then I'm blending that out with the E57 and then pulling that E55 across the center for a highlight. Then I'm going to use those same shades to color in the handle of the basket, just starting at the bottom with the darkest and working my way up. I wanted the lid of the basket to be just a shade lighter, so I'm starting with that E57 at the part where the two flaps meet, casting a little shadow there since one end is raised. And then I'm blending that out with the E55 for my midtone and using the E53 for a highlight. And then I accidentally got a little bit of brown on that napkin, so I just grabbed my colorless blender to push that color back out of that space so it would be white again. Then I'm going to do the bread, and I wanted it to be a different brown than the basket. So I went with the E30s. I chose E31, E33, and E35. I put the darkest at the bottom where it would be the most browned. And then I'm blending toward the top with the E33 and then the E31. And I decided to pull in the E30 for the very top and also the little slits on the top of the loaf. Then I'm going to use YG17 to add a little bit of a plaid pattern to the napkin that is sticking out of the basket. And I also added a stripe to the top of both of the mugs. And then I'm going to use that to color in the leaves of the bouquet of flowers that the one bunny is carrying. And then I wanted to deepen up that green. I didn't feel like the plaid especially showed up very well since there's only a sliver of it showing. So I used the G28 to add a bit of darker plaid in there. And then also just a touch to each of the leaves in the bouquet. I used BG11 to give the jam jar a glassy look. And then I'm going to fill that in with some jam in just a little bit. But first I'm going to color in the flowers in the bouquet using E40. So they have just a touch of an off-white shade to them. And then for the centers of the flowers, I'm using Y08. And because they're so super tiny, I just dotted a touch of that to the centers that you could see. And then added a little bit of Y06 around the center. Then for the jam, I'm going to use R22, R24, and R29. So I'm putting the R29 down at the bottom, and then I'm going to blend that up with the R24. And I'm trying to leave just the tiniest sliver of that glass on the outside edge so it looks like it's full, but um, still retains that glassy look. I blend it out with the R22. And now I'm ready to add my print to the blanket. And I wanted to do a floral print, but I wanted it to be fairly subtle. I wanted it to look like one of those really soft, fuzzy blankets. And I also don't want it to detract from all the other images that are going to be on top of it. So I'm using the R20 to add some blobs to the blanket, just kind of some random ovalish shapes, um, nothing too specific, almost like little clouds maybe. And I'm just trying to make a consistent pattern so it really looks like a printed fabric. So once I have all of that down, I'm going to take the R22 then 
and I'm going to add some little um, like half circles and things to create a little floral pattern so it looks like petals. So I'm going to do that all the way across on each of those little blobs, just trying to kind of stay within that shape that I've drawn. Very quick and easy to do. And then to really make this look like a floral print, I have to add some leaves. So I'm gonna go back to my YG17 and just do some quick little um, like oval shapes or like almost like an eye shape, an almond maybe. Um, just here and there, just scattering them in different directions uh, between and around those florals. I'm also making sure that some of them run off the edge of the blanket just like the florals so it looks like a continuous piece of fabric that has been cut out and then to give them a little bit of definition I'm just going to add a tiny line down the center of each leaf with that G28. So now that this first sheet is done I will set that aside and work on the strawberry vines. And for this one, I'm gonna go back to some of the combinations that I've already used in the other images. So everything will be nice and consistent. So for the strawberries, I'm using R22, R24, and R29. Just adding a little R29 at the bottom of each berry. So that's where it would probably be the ripest. Um, I don't know, I think you could reverse it as well and it would still look really nice, but I just tend to do the darkest shade down at the bottom. It's also the part that's the furthest away from the sun, so it would be getting the least amount of light. So it um, just seems like a natural shadow place. And then blending out with that R24. And because these berries are pretty small, I'm gonna just do them all at once. So um, just finishing up the last couple on this side, and then I'm going to take the R22, which is gonna be my highlight shade, but on some of these berries, I'm going to leave a little spot left. I like to add a little bit of green to some of my strawberries to just make them look like they're still ripening, and especially these because they're still on the vine. So some of them I'm filling in completely so that they'll look like they're in different stages of ripeness. But then for the others, I'm gonna grab a pale yellow green, it's YG01. And I'll just start in that white area that I left and blend that down into the pink so that it's a little more seamless. But it just gives a, you know, a little extra unexpected something to those berries. And for the vine, I'm gonna go back to the G28, and I'm just gonna color that vine in almost completely with that shade. It's such a thin little line that you really can't fit more than one color in there. So just using the very tip of that marker and light pressure to fill that in, and the only place that I'm gonna leave a little smidge of space for an extra shade is at the very end of that vine where it is the thickest. I just left a little bit of room there for another contrasting shade. And then I'm gonna do the vine on the other side as well, just being very careful to stay in those lines because like I said, they're, they are pretty skinny, but if, as long as you use a light pressure and don't push down too hard on your marker, it's very easy to color in. But before I move on to the next shade to fill in the bottom of those vines, I'm gonna continue with this one on the strawberry caps and just add a bit of darkness to those as well. Again, concentrating that darkest color closest to the base of the strawberry where I feel it would get the least amount of sun and just filling those in, uh, not completely, saving a little bit of room on the ends for the YG17. So I'll fill in the rest of the caps with that. I'm just using two shades on those caps because they are pretty thin little spiky bits, so I felt like two shades was plenty. 
So just kind of flicking that color, pulling that G17 in with the rest, and also filling in the bottom of those vines where I left that little bit of space. So I'm going to just finish up these last few, and then I'm going to start on the leaves. And for the leaves, I'm going to go back to my darkest shade, that uh, G28, and I'm going to add a little bit of color at the base of each leaf, and then also bring it up on the sides uh, just to kind of fade that color out toward the outside edges. So I'm going to do just one vine at a time because uh, this color I do, it is pretty dark. So if you're not doing something small, I do think it's better to blend out while it's still really saturated and wet. So now I'm going to come in with that YG17 and just pull that color even further toward the outside edges. Because these leaves are a lot broader, I will pull in a third shade to finish those off. So I'm just filling in almost to the edges, but still leaving a little bit of room there for a highlight. And that highlight shade is going to be YG13. So it's got a touch of more of a yellowy tone in it. It's just going to brighten up those vines and give them a fresh look. So I'm working on the rest of those leaves, just filling in all of those on the left side. And then once they're done, I'll go back and do the leaves on the right. And I will do a second layer on all of the leaves off screen as well, just to blend out that um, difference, especially between the G28 and the YG17. There is a pretty big step there, but it's the, the closest that I have in my collection for this combo. So I'm just going to do a second layer to smooth things out and increase that saturation. But I'll do that off screen because um, it's pretty repetitive to just color in all of these leaves over and over. Um, but anyway, I do love these strawberry vines so much. The Strawberry Jam stamp set is one of my most favorite stamp sets of all time. I just love it. And I love the little critters that come with the set, the little mouse and the bird. And I've done a card with that previously. But I just thought it would be fun to mix it up with some different critters. And you guys know how much I love bunnies, so that's what I decided to go with today. For the strawberry blossoms, I'm going with E40 and E41. So they're going to look like the same flowers that the bunny with the bouquet is holding. So I'm just doing a little E41 at the very center of each flower and also on the one that's kind of folded over a little bit. And then using the E40 to pull that color out down each petal so that I just get a nice little bit of an off-white shade in the center. And then I also decided to pull just a touch of that E40 down from the top of each petal where it's indented as well to give that a little bit of shadow. So once I have the flowers colored, I'm going to go back to the same colors I use for the centers of the other flowers, which is Y08 and Y06. Just a little Y08 first and then blending out with the Y06. And then in order to get my strawberry seeds back to white, I'm going to use a white Sakura jelly roll pen. So I'm just going to dot that right over the little seeds that I have colored right over. It was just a lot easier to color over them than try to go around each of those tiny little seeds. So this is a much quicker way to get those looking like those white seeds once again. So just quickly dotting those right over the places where they're drawn in. And I think that just really gives them a lot of texture too and really brings them to life. So once I'm done with those strawberry vines, I also want to take a clear glaze pen and I'm going to go over the jam jar. So it's the same kind of pen. It's a Sakura Jelly Roll pen, but this one's just clear and it gives you a nice gloss. So I thought that would be perfect for the glass just going over that completely and then also on the top of the jar and then I'm going to trim these images out with their matching dies. 
To give my background a bit of scenery, I'm going to take a piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock and the Lawn Fawn Cloudy Stencil, and I'm going to blend on some Salvage Patina Distress Oxide ink. So I'm just starting at the top and working my way off of that stencil using a firmer pressure as I leave the stencil and then kind of lifting up and getting lighter as I make contact with the paper so that I get a nice little fade uh, as it goes up. And then I'm gonna just turn that stencil so I get a different cloud formation and work my way back up. And if you get a little bit um, you know, off, <laughs> you can just readjust your stencil and go right back to what you were doing there, blending that color on. And then I'm going to turn my stencil one more time and do one more cloud formation because I want to save some room at the bottom for the grass. So I'm going to do that, just working my way up, making sure that the clouds kind of dip and fall in different places so they don't all look exactly the same. And then I'll blend a little extra color down at the bottom just so that bottom row of clouds isn't too stark white. Then I'm going to take the MFT Drifts and Hills stencil and I'm going to place that where I want my grass to go. I'm going to blend on some Twisted Citron Distress Oxide ink, just holding that stencil firmly in place. And again, starting at the top where the stencil is and working my way down that panel. Today I wanted the grass to be darker at the top and lighter at the bottom, so I am going to darken that up with some Mowed Lawn Distress Oxide ink, just going right over the top of that and letting that fade into the Twisted Citron, and making sure to hold that stencil really tight so I get a nice, you know, seamless outline of the hill. And then I went back and blended the transition with the other mini ink blending tool. Then I wanted to add some splatters to the sky, so I'm just going to use that Drifts and Hills stencil as a mask now. And I pressed some of that Salvage Patina Distress Oxide ink onto an acrylic block, watered that down a bit, and then I'm going to mix that up so it's a little bit more of a flowing consistency, and tap that off the block with a paintbrush so I get some little speckles in the background. So once I'm finished with that, I will remove that stencil and set this aside to dry completely. In the meantime, I'm going to take a piece of pattern paper from the MFT Pretty in Plaid 6x6 pad, and I wanted this green plaid. I'm going to trim that out with the Hello Bluebird Gallery Frame 6 die. I'm just going to use the outer frame of that, and I also die cut that out of some plain white cardstock so that I can glue these together and make it a bit more stable. I want to use this as a frame and pop it up with some foam tape, so I needed it to have a little more structure than just the pattern paper on itself. So now that the background has dried, I'm going to stamp my sentiment using some VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And I'm doing the one that says, Time spent with you is my favorite from the Strawberry Jam stamp set. So I just stamp that down in the center of the background. And then I'm going to stamp on the inside of my card base. I'm using some Lawn Fawn Cilantro cardstock and Noble Fur ink to stamp the little bunny with the bird from Meadow Bunnies, and then the sentiment is also from Strawberry Jam. So now I'm ready to start assembling. I'm gonna take that background and adhere that to the card front, just making sure that the corners are lined up nice and straight on there. And then I'll take that plaid frame, and I'm going to peel off the release papers and then I'm going to pop that up to um, just line that card so that everything is um, kind of framed up and it just pulls your focus towards the center. So making sure that that is lined up nice and straight as well. And then I can grab my images. So the strawberry vines are going to partially cover the uh, frame. So I just needed a little bit of foam tape at the top where I wanted that to have a little bit of lift, but I wanted it to be flat at the bottom of the seam so that I can layer all of my other elements on top. 
So just adding some liquid glue where the foam tape isn't and making sure that I have those vines on there um, kind of equal on both sides of the sentiment. I did realize that my sentiment was accidentally stamped just slightly to the left. So I will try to balance that out in a little bit with one of the images. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm going to add that blanket down at the bottom. So I just needed to trim off the end of that vine so it wouldn't be poking up behind the blanket. So I'll adhere that down right above the frame down at the bottom. Then I'm going to grab the sitting bunny and add her over on the left hand side. So she's the one who has packed this picnic and invited our little guest bunny over for a, a nice afternoon in the sun under the strawberry vines. So I'm going to tuck the picnic basket behind her foot to just push that a little bit further back in the scene. And then here comes Mr. Bunny with his bouquet of flowers for the date. <laughs> so I'll add him over on the right hand side. And then next I'm going to add the little jar of jam, kind of uh, spreading the things out between the two of them. I'll add the loaf of bread, just kind of tilting that at a little bit of an angle. And then I'm going to add the plate. And I wasn't sure where to put the set uh, at first, but I decided to go right in the center uh, and add the knife on top of that. So I would have room on the left and the right for the two little mugs. So I'll add one next to her and then the other one is kind of weeding in front for him to uh, sit down and enjoy the picnic. So all that's left is my butterflies and the first one I'm going to place right next to that sentiment to kind of balance it out since like I said it was just a slight shift over to the left by accident and then this final butterfly I went back and forth but decided to fill in the space between them and have that butterfly kind of hovering above those flowers as if it were drawn by the flowers so to finish up this card I just need to add a little bit of glitter to take it over the top so I'm going to grab my favorite Stardust Stickles and add that to the centers of each of the strawberry blossoms and also to the centers of the bouquet of flowers and a little bit to the butterfly's wings as well. And then I will lift that up to the camera so you guys can see how that catches the light and also the shine of the jam jar. And I will open that up so you can see the inside as well. Super cute. I love these bunnies so much. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. I post new ones every Monday and Friday. If you're interested in any of these products, I'll have everything listed and linked for you in the description bar below, so you can just click and go. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy. You can click on either one to check them out. Thank you guys so much again for watching. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing day. Bye-bye.